Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I want to go through a couple of practice drawings that we skipped during video one, in particular this pipe drawing here, and a couple pages further down, this screw drawing. So I'm going to start with the, the first one here, the pipe drawing. And for this video, look at our free CAD 0 0.19 and revision 24.36.6. I'm going to make a new document here and switch over to part design, a body, and a sketch. And I'll put a sketch there. And for this one, if you remember back to video one, we went through this part. And this part's got this funky piece down here where it's where it's one pipe and then another pipe, um, but they're not connected together. And because this part doesn't have that geometry, um, we should be able to use the hollow tool. So we'll, we'll model this part here, and then we should be able to hollow it out. Although I'm a little concerned that the edge here is going to end up with a, uh, a round on the outside, which is not quite what is shown in the drawing here. I think it shows a sharp edge. But if that happens, we'll, uh, we'll deal with it, you know, when we get to it. So come over here. So we've got a sketch, and I'm just going to sketch the main center pipe. Okay, and let's see, it is of a diameter 70. So come over here and I'll grab my diameter tool, 70. And pad this up. The height here is, let's see, the 126 plus 12. And then I guess we just assume that this here is also 12. I don't see that called out anywhere in particular. So it's I think that's a fair assumption. All the flanges seem to be the same. This flange here is also 12. So do 126 plus 12. Oops, I am not typing. 126 plus 12 plus 12. Okay. So now for this second part here, let's see if I can zoom back out. Okay, for this second part, we need a offset plane. So I'm going to unhide the origin, and we'll see we need an offset plane. So this plane here, you, you might miss this because it's hidden inside the part, but there's a 27 distance, and then an angle of 115. And let's see, I suppose they didn't give us a, uh, like a vertical dimension. So we'll, we'll pick one and we'll figure out if it's correct later. I, I'm guessing that they want this edge here to be horizontal with uh, the other edge over here. So that would be my guess. I don't see any areas that they they call out that particularly but you know we'll uh we'll try our best here so i'm going to hide the original pad and for this i'm going to make a sketch on this plane okay so i'm going to model Let's see, I'm going to model this line here. If you remember, the origin for our sketch is like this. So, and I'm just going to pick a random distance for the, the height. So, grab this, do a line here. We know that the distance for this is 27. So, I'm going to use the at angle line tool, the distance between two points, to be 27. And 
I'm going to actually unhide the pad that we had before um, so that we can see where this is. And I'm going to use the cut away button here to see where I am. Now, this seems um, a, a little, a little odd. Let me, let me exit this sketch real fast and make sure that my diameter is correct. So I've got a diameter of 70. Looks like we're still cut away. Okay, well, graphics glitch. I guess we'll just work with it. So a diameter of 70. I, I don't see how this dimension is possible. Um, seems to be correct. Um, my guess is this is supposed to be 270. So we'll, we'll go with that. I tell you, there's been, well, that's, that is way too long. I don't know. Let's, let's just pick a number. How about, how about a hundred? Okay. That looks approximately correct. Um, grab the cut away and then I shall vertically dimension this. Let's see. Oops, did not like that vertical and shirt for me. And then we need the angle dimension. We, there is a angle dimension tool and 115 and it shows the right side of that angle. Okay. And we can see this here probably needs to be a little bit higher. Um, I don't know. We'll just move it up a little bit and, and think about it later. Okay. So now I'm going to grab a plane here and my reference is going to be this line. So that lines my plane up with this line. And the second reference is the end of that line. And Let's see, what we need to do is delete this, delete that, and then reselect the end of that line, I believe. Oops, we've made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so the line, delete that, and then reselect the end of it. So that, that orients the sketch perpendicular to the line, and then we move, in the second step there, we move the sketch, or the plane, to the point on this line. Okay, so we're done with this sketch for the time being, so I'm going to hide it. And then I'm going to do a sketch on this plane. Let's see, and I actually need to bring back my sketch so I can pull the center off of it. So I am going to grab this, grab that, I guess the, the origin is actually at the center, so we didn't need to do that, but we did it anyways. Alrighty. And then for this one, it is a 60. So a circle with a diameter of 60. And 60. Okay. We exit this. We can hide the plane here. Think we're done with this sketch. And then we can pad this. And it's not going to like it. We're going to have to go pretty far. Um, and maybe it's going in the wrong direction there. What did that say? Creating face from sketch fail. Uh, let's make sure that we're extruding the correct face. There we go. Okay, so check, got that, um, picked 100, uh, that gets it inside, so seems good. You could do that more parametrically, um, but I'll just leave that for now. So then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to hollow this out, and I believe this Thick solid tool is the correct thing. Hide the origin there with the space bar. 
So I'm going to select the sides that I want to end up with holes in them. Click the solid and let's see if it ended up with a fillet in the middle. It did not, so looks like we're doing good there. Okay, so the thickness, I guess we probably should have checked and made sure that the thickness was the same on both of them. Um, let's see, so here the outside is 70 and the inside is 50, so the wall thickness is 20. And then for this 60, the second dimension, let's see, is up here in this auxiliary view. And it must be, uh, let's see, the, the smaller of the two dimensions, probably. Um, so 14.4. Now that does seem to be a different um, thickness. So... It is unlikely that this pad tool will will do the correct thing. Um, so maybe maybe we don't end up using the pad tool, and we just end up cutting through this normally. It's a uh, unfortunate, but I guess I should have thought about that earlier. Um, so we'll back off the pad tool, and we'll come over here and just do some normal sketches. Alright, let's see. So sketch on this face, a circle here. I'm actually going to grab the outside of this circle here. Right, if I can click on it. So we can put these at the same point. And then the inside of this circle. Now this says that it's a diameter of 14.4. I don't believe that. That seems way too small. Uh, let's see, 14.4. I mean, that is like, that is minuscule. There's, there's no way that's right. So that must be a radius. Or maybe I'm reading this wrong, but I'm fairly certain that that, that is not correct. So let's see. 14.4. Uh, times two. Oops, that did not work. Fourteen point four times two. Okay. Uh, does that seem correct? That 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 does not seem correct either to me. Um, how about how about this? How about this? You know, since since their dimensions aren't correct, I'll just do my own thing, and I'll actually use the uh, the shell tool here. I guess it's not called the shell tool; it's called the make thick solid tool. And let us see. So we modeled this from the outside, so we want the thickness to be inwards. And I guess it, it does end up giving us a little fillet like I was talking about before. But I think that's probably okay. So for the wall thickness, I'm going to choose 20 because that's what it had. Although that that does not seem correct either, right? I mean, that is that is a very thick pipe. Oh, it's, it's actually 10. I forgot that the 20 was the thickness of the diameter. That seems more reasonable. Okay, so we'll, we'll go with that. Okay, so the rest of this is, is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to make a sketch on this top face. And it is a circle with a couple of holes in it. Let's see. Yes, a circle with some holes in it. So four holes. One, two, three, four. 
and we've got a bold circle here for reference. Go up here, switch it to a reference dimension with a diameter of 25. Um, there's, there's no way that's correct. Um, that's, that's tiny. So uh, let's, let's pick a more reasonable diameter. How about a diameter of halfway between 70 and 120? So 70 plus 120 and the quantity of that divided by 2. Okay, seems much more reasonable. Now we'll put the centers of our circles on this line here. Okay, and we'll make all of our circles equal. And let's see, let's see. These are 10 diameter circles. That seems correct. And then this outside was 120. Okay. And because if you if you recall earlier to this pad, we padded it the full height, we're actually going to extrude this back into the model. Oops, except I don't want to extrude the pad, I want to extrude this sketch. Okay, so we'll choose reverse, and I'm just now noticing that I missed a circle. Um, but we'll come back to that, so this is 12 thick. And then we can come back, edit this sketch, and put in that circle. So I'm going to grab the outside of this. Grab the circle tool and those two equal. Okay. So then you could do this exact same thing on the bottom, but seeing as it's a mirror, I'll just mirror this over. And to do that, I'm going to need a plane in the middle. So I'll make a plane and it is midpoint. Um, I guess not quite midpoint. Let's see if we can get this in the middle. Hmm. <laughs> It's not liking that. So what I'm actually going to do is we'll delete this, delete that. I'll put it here and I'll give it an offset of the length of that pad divided by two. So we are offset in the Z direction and the pad is just pad. So pad dot length divided by two. Okay, so now it's right in the middle of the model. And I will grab the mirror tool, mirror this pad. And I want to mirror it about my axis. Okay, and then we can go ahead and hide this feature. So then the last bit is this triangle face. And it's kind of difficult to, to tell how this face is oriented, but looking at this sketch here, you'll see that this part of the face here is vertical. So I think we'll use that as our orientation. So come over here and this face, you recall we did differently. I guess we went on our own for, for this face here. But we'll we'll have to so for this one here, right, we padded it back. Um, but this one here, we can pad it forward. I believe that is the plan. 
Okay, so this face, sketch on that face, and grab myself the triangle tool. I guess the line tool and draw a triangle. Let's see, it is equilateral. Um, I guess they use typical there. Uh, let's see. And then I grab the fillet, sketch fillet, fillet the sides, and I'll make the fillets equal. And we've got a radius of eight. So I'll put them at eight, and then. I'm going to grab the circle off of this face so that I have a reference. And I actually want the inner circle since we need to pad the outside thickness too. And to orient this, I'm going to grab this face and make it vertical. And then I'm going to put a second circle in and make you a construction line. And then this will be tangent with that, and then it'll be tangent with this one too, and lastly, it'll be tangent with this third one. So that ensures that my triangle is centered properly. And then I'll grab the line thickness here, Let's see, it wants, what does it want? Um, I would assume that they're saying that this here is, is the thickness of this line. Because um, it seems to line up, they don't explicitly say it, but we'll just assume that. So the, this line here at 27.71, I can already tell you this is gonna be way too small. I mean, it's just absurdly small. So we will make this bigger by, I don't know. Let's see, how about, how about we do like 70? <laughs> Um, it's got to be bigger than that. How about 100? Okay, that seems more reasonable, more reasonable. So then, let's see. I need some circles. And we'll put a circle here, circle here, and a circle here. And I'm going to get myself a bolt circle for reference um, to line up those circles. Oops. Let's see. More a point on a line and a point on a line and lastly a point on a line. And for this, uh, let's see, do a radius and maybe like 80, oops, that is actually a radius. Okay, uh, maybe maybe a little bit bigger, maybe 50 sounds better. Um, and we'll do this and this are horizontal, maybe horizontal. Okay, and then for the rest of these, I'm going to just grab some construction lines and put them on it. That should line them up also. Oops, and I've exited my sketch. So this one here on a line and boom, boom, boom. They are all equal, and 
the radius is apparently 4.32. Okay, so that seems small-ish. Well, I guess that's that's a diameter of four point three two. So this is actually six point or eight point six four, um, but it seems approximately correct. This one here, I see he did not get stuck to the middle like the rest of them. Let's see, let's see. So I think we have everything. Um, we do have to work on this part a little bit. We need like a, a chamfer, it seems, or maybe it's a little a little offset inside of it. Um, kind of difficult to know, but it appears to be like a counterbore type situation. Um, so we will work on that. So pad this. Oops, once again, I've forgotten the center circle. Uh, grab this, make a circle, and there we go. Pad this. And this should be 12 thick. And now if I am correct, there is a counter bore here with a diameter that is just a little bit smaller, or I guess a little bit bigger than the internal diameter by uh, 0.6. So We'll go ahead and model that. So I'll do a sketch on this face. I'm going to grab the inside of that. And I believe all we need is one line. And let's see. Can we dimension between those two? We cannot. So I'm going to put a line between the two and dimension that line. We'll make the line horizontal and then I will add the center point onto that line. Um, so that means it's locked and it can only move in and out. And then horizontally dimension this line to be 0.6. And I guess it's it's actually 0.6 divided by 2, but seeing as all of their stuff is already messed up, um, that would be like really, really small. So, I mean, even this is quite small. So then I will pocket this. Um, it is 8 deep. Okay. And then lastly, I'll come down here and I will turn the refine on to true. See if we can get rid of uh, some of those extra lines. Okay, so that right there is this one complete. So I'm gonna save this. Okay, and then going to move on to this other part. And for this one, I'm actually going to open up a new file. <clears throat> and I think the plan for this one so far is we're going to model the general shape of this part. So I'm going to do the top bit, you know, this kind of middle bit, the bit with the threads on it. And we'll cut the bit with the threads on it. And then um, we'll move on to this knurling and see if we can cut that. I expect this, this knurling is going to be quite troublesome um, for, for reasons that I will explain 
when we get there if it happens. But uh, that is the plan. So part design, need a body, body sketch. And for this one, sure. So I will, let's see. I'm actually, so I know I just said this, but I'm actually going to start with this section here and cut the threads on it and then extrude the rest of this up um, so that I don't have to worry about this interface between these two bits. So with that new plan, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to dimension to the outer width of this, which I believe is the 10. So 10 and close that, pad this, and we are padding to a height of 31 minus 11, so 20. And then for this second bit, um, to cut these threads on here, I'm going to bring back the origin. And I'm going to make a sketch on this one, this plane here. Okay, and then I'm going to grab this. Oops and come over here, hide my pad, and then I'm going to model one set of teeth. So this particular tooth pattern looks like a cutout, and this just patterned a couple of times. Um, so that's what I'm going to model. In fact, uh, we only need to model this cutout section. So this is the section we need to model because this, this bit here, the little flat bit, is actually modeled by the pad that we did earlier. So I'm going to draw a triangle, and let's see, triangle. And this outside face is a vertical. And this inside face, let's see. So distance here horizontally is uh, 0.41. And then the vertical distance here, so what they've, what they've given us is this here is the distance from this down to here. That's the pitch. And then they've given you this distance here is that distance of the flat bit. So the height of this part, this, this particular section, is going to be one inch minus point or one millimeter minus point one eight millimeters. So one minus point one eight, and then I'm gonna make this horizontal. Um, and I'm going to do that by putting a point there using the symmetry tool. So put this in the midpoint of that line and then horizontal. And now I believe this is fully defined uh, with the exception of its position. So I'm going to put it vertical with the outside of this. <laughs> and then, let's see, what do I want to do? We will, uh, we'll, we'll put it one full, um, oops, yeah, so I want the distance between this and this. We'll put it one full pitch down. So, in, the reason, the reason that I'm doing that is because if you didn't, um, so you've got this triangle bit and you're, you're kind of revolving it around like this, is you'd miss this section here. 
right? So you'd miss like the first cut on that one side. Um, I, I hope that makes sense. So we will close this and then I'm going to use the sweep a selected sketch along a helix and remove it from the body tool. It's quite the long name. And for this one, let's see, I want pitch and turns. So pitch of one millimeter and turns, we just need a few. We need um, 20 turns to be precise. Let's see, so we'll go like 22. So that'll give us one turn off the end of this thing, and we should be good. And cone angle here we're not using. Oops. Let's see. Cone angle there we're not using because uh, that would that would be like if you wanted your helix to curve inwards, um, and we don't want that. So we'll leave that one like that. And I've already seen when we click OK on this, there's a, uh, oops. OK, yeah, so there's kind of like a graphical issue going on here. And I suspect this has probably got to do with the sketch. and it needs to extend a little bit farther off the end of this bit so that this, this face here is not in contact, like exactly in contact with the outside of the cylinder. So we'll model that and we'll uh, see what happens. Oops, I have pressed the F1 key, which I guess brings up the documentation. And go back to editing the sketch. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take this line here and make it a construction line. Just to add a few bits on to the outside of this. And make this parallel this parallel and this one let's see I don't know we'll do we'll do like one millimeter for the horizontal distance of this outside bit so hopefully this this fixes our issue and you can see there it did so now we're, we're looking looking good And I noticed that uh, in this model, there's no, there's no thread relief on this. So thread relief would be like it looking like this um, up before the head. And, and you do this because these threads don't, don't get fully formed. Um, if you did this on a leg, maybe you know, you're doing this on a, uh, on like a rolling machine. Maybe those do get fully formed. I'm not sure, but interesting to note, there's no thread relief. Um, let's see. So I'm actually going to go back to the pad here and sketch on top of it. And I'll grab the outside of this. And while we brought the pad back, um, it's just like temporarily back. So it's not like we're actually, you know, losing parts. And, and how I did that was I used the space bar to hide the subtractive helix. And I used the space bar to unhide the pad. Uh, okay. So for this one, I think I'm going to put in this with a diameter of 
16 right here. Close that and pad this. And you can see our, our threads popped back into existence there. And this one is this 7 minus 11 tall. So that would be 4 millimeters. And then we've got a chamfer on the bottom edge there. Okay, so grab the chamfer tool, put a chamfer on that edge. This is a 1. Oops, my line's in the way. This here, a 1 by 45. So that would be equal distance. So that's looking good. Pop a, another sketch onto this bit. And grab the circle tool. Put a radius on, or a diameter on this of 20 and pad that up the 7 okay and then this has a 45 degree chamfer on the top of it too so I'm actually going to move object after other object I'll move it after the pad and I expect that it it breaks. We'll, we'll see. Oh, no, it's actually... Okay, so it did not like that. So we will delete that. This pad did not break, so that's good. And we'll put the chamfer back in. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we've only got one chamfer. Um, because it simplifies the tree. Okay, so now we have everything here except for the diamond knurling that we make as per our own specifications. Um, so at this point, you could say diamond knurling. Yeah, that's, you know, not something that's important to the model. It just adds geometry. But, you know, I mean, threads normally aren't important to the model and they add like a lot of geometry so we'll go ahead and give it a shot at making this diamond knurling so there are a few ways that you could do this um, since this one here is so short you could probably get away with just doing kind of like a 45 degree um, cutout and in pocketing, or I guess polar patterning that all the way around, and then and then doing the same thing the other direction. Um, but this this kind of leaves you with the uh, odd spacing um, because what what you're doing is you're making a cut like this, so it ends up kind of thick in the middle and thin on the edges. So what we what we really want to do is we want to use this uh, this helix tool once again. So we'll see if we can we can get that working for us. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a sketch down on this face and it's going to be very similar to this this thread we put down earlier this is going to be a triangle and the outside is vertical and I from what we learned before this needs to be longer than I guess it needs to be outside of the, the cylinder in order to make the cut properly. And make that symmetrical, horizontal. 
and I'll just put another point in the middle and make this symmetrical too. And I'm going to grab this here, make those two points vertical. And then I want this thing to be, uh, sure, a, a 45. That's, that's quite a uh, aggressive knurling, I think, but, um, we'll do that anyways. And for this, it looks to be about the same as the thread, so I'll just use the same as the thread. Um, actually, let's see. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's diamond knurling, so we'll, we'll actually do this as a one millimeter and then we will ooh, let's see I don't want that to be one millimeter I actually want uh, the distance that we're, we're cutting to be one millimeter so I want this point this point this point to be vertical and then I'll dimension between these two points at one millimeter. Okay, so that's looking better. And we will do the same thing here. We will start this a bit up. And do the revolve. See, it's, it's going in the wrong direction. We want a pitch of one also. Um, so we'll do reversed here. Get it cutting down. Looks like we need a little bit farther in order to get it to cut fully through. Um, so that, you know, if you wanted a thread, that's, uh, that's good. Um, but what we actually need to do here is we need to like stretch this out. So pitch is not going to be one. It's going to be more than one. Um, so let's, let's look at 20 and I should have changed this to pitch height. Okay, so what we're looking for is a uh, 45 degree angle. Um, and I'm sure you could calculate how much pitch you would need for a 45 degree angle. Um, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Because my, my diamond knurling spec is quite uh, loose in its, in its requirements. Let's see, it seems to be thinking, so uh, let's see, we'll do, we'll do 30, that looks about right, okay. And you see we've got this, this nice cutout in here, not quite, not quite at a 45, but uh, it's close, so I'm going to grab this and polar pattern it and I want to pattern around this axis which would be the Z axis and then I want quite a few occurrences let's try 30 um, since that's what our pitch was And it's going to think here for quite some time. Okay. So it's, it's finished thinking here. So you can see that we've got approximately half of the knurling done. So we'll go back and, and do the other half of it. And to do this, I'm going to grab the same sketch and 
do the, the same thing. So a pitch of 30, and we want the reversed direction. We also want the left-handed version. So you see it's, it's cutting the other way, and we probably need this to go a bit farther. Cut all the way through it. Okay, and then do OK on that. Alrighty, looking good, looking good. And then we'll take this helix and polar pattern it. And we want 30 of these. Turn off the update view. Um, 30 of those. Okay and um, maybe, oh, I guess it did not take that. Okay, it's going to sit here and, and think for quite a while longer. Um, oh, so it's, it's done a bunch of cuts at some random angle. So we actually want to want to cut at the Z angle. So we'll specify that. And it's going to think for quite a bit longer. All righty. So that took quite a long time to rebuild that feature. But as you can see there, we got some fancy diamond knurling on our... Uh, our bolt here and I would not recommend like using this bolt in an assembly like this bolt probably has got more geometry than most things you would ever model so um, but yeah I hope you you learned something um, what I was concerned about that I mentioned earlier is this particular corner section here where you've got one cut coming through and it's it's cutting into a spot that basically goes infinitely thin. Um, I thought it was going to trip up on that and it appears that it did not. So it did a, it did a great job. This actually looks fantastic. Um, so thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day.